Tell, tell me more about how you go about planning your your segments. If this is the, you said no silver bullets, but here's a magic key, so. Magic key, like a starting point. Yeah, all yeah. segments, data and campaigns are like chicken and egg, just three of them. And the marketer is uh, is faced with a problem like where to start. So start with the segments. That's, that's how we uh, suggest you to do it. And uh, we recommend to, well, if you haven't, talk to your customers, understand what stages they go through, and uh, just map the customer journey like UX people do, you know, uh, from, from trial to, to paying customer, etc. Also helps to, well, um, probably business owners can easily map that, uh, but anybody who has been, for example, setting up your billing system can help you with the nitty gritty details on that on how exactly people move through the journey. Because it's not just uh, mental segments, they're actually people going from one status to another in terms of their billing, in terms of their subscription status, etc. Super interesting. I wanted to, I, I want to be respectful of your time. And, and I also want to understand that we've got somebody on the podcast that runs a company that does email automation. I know you can't share all the customer data, but I did want to ask you, without sharing their names, uh, can we maybe talk about some examples of just absolutely outstanding um, metrics or email results that you've seen, um, and maybe what you thought there uh, was one of the like some of the keys to their success? We are doing a very poor job there, to be honest. I don't think I can make you happy with a good case study there. So usually yeah. um, a lot of our businesses are going from zero to one in their email automation. And usually that doesn't involve, you know, getting spectacular 10x outcomes on conversion. And to be 100% honest, uh, measuring the effectiveness of your emails versus people just doing their thing uh, without any intervention. In intervention. It's pretty hard because in order to truly measure the impact of uh, onboarding emails, for example, you'd have to compare two very narrow cohorts of people. One would be people who have uh, received your email, um, opened and clicked, and but didn't do anything, and those who received, opened and clicked and did do something. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm getting it wrong, but uh, basically it's not just comparing people who click the email versus the rest of the people that would be completely incorrect that you need to put these comparisons in like fair conditions. So nobody does it like nobody. And uh, yeah, it's really hard it's, to just isolate a single variable. Yeah. yeah it a also lot of like, this. like one month, your leads might be coming from one source another month, they might be coming from another source, it might be September when everybody wants their uh, new email marketing platform, like, mm -hmm. but the previous three months have been super quiet and you never know what exactly, uh, if, if the influence of that is due to email or due to seasons or whatever not. So it's, uh, it's really hard, but it's, it's, it's really silly not to try because mm -hmm. it's obviously a direct channel into people's inboxes. So. <laughs> uh, you mentioned seasonality. I mean, we, we've seen this as well. We had just the first couple of weeks of September were absolutely the craziest uh, in terms of leads coming in that we, I think Isn't we've ever fantastic? seen. Isn't <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Followed up by the worst week. Like it just went like crazy and then down to zero to the point where we're like, check everything. We broke something. Nothing broke. It was just variance. <laughs> how, how do you, how do you think about like variance versus sort of seasonality? Is there like, is there a silver bullet? Is there a key? Is there, or do I just sit there going, yeah, it's just variance. I hope. <laughs> uh, well, I'd love to swap the table and see, flip the table and see if, uh, what, what you do with seasonality. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's fair. I think it's so much is con is dependent on the context of the market. Um, and like what's going on. And it's one of those things where you're kind of stacking probabilities of like, well, I think it's 10% related to this and, you know, 10% chance it's related to this, 10% chance it's related to that. You know, we definitely look at uh, historical benchmarks. We've got 10 years of data on historicals. Um, but then when you go back seven years ago, well, we were using a different system here uh, and we had a different sales setup and we had a different uh, pricing mix. And so it's, it can be challenging to go back too far 
um, especially when you don't understand the context of the data. Because if I were to step out and somebody else were to step in and look back, they're like, oh, wow, you had a huge spike here. But I'm like, oh, well, yeah, that was the first year we went to Saster, right? Like, of course, like 300 and whatever badge scans are going to come in. Uh, but you'll notice they didn't they didn't do a whole ton. I'm not saying Saster was bad, just like the badge scan approach of like pulling in uh, marketing leads at Saster or calling them marketing leads when they're really just badge scans uh, was not the most effective. And so I think there is an element of seasonality that we've seen for our offering. And sometimes those are on, um, like we've got two different offerings and they can be on conflicting uh, schedules, which is kind of handy, uh, but it can also drive your sales team crazy when you've got one person that handles one offering. They're like, why are they getting all the good leads? It's like, well, no, it's just June happens to be more coaching friendly and September and January happen to be more you know, sales or outsourcing you know, driven people are really thinking about that at certain times. And so I think to me, it comes down to, to use case, uh, to like co company history and understanding when the big conferences are happening. Mm -hmm.